A few weeks back, we looked at the evolution of AI tools, from how we can create images with text down to making 3D models. And as good as this sounds, AI seems to be making rounds in some areas that we don't really think about. And one of them is high quality image restoration for human faces. Of course, tools like Photoshop, Real Sgen, and some online tools are pushing for these features, but the results can be varying as these tools are really good at upscaling and retaining certain features of the image. But in most cases, these tools are rather upscaling tools than human face restoration tools. And that is where the code format comes in. Created by the folks at S-Lab Nanyang Technology University, this is a free online AI tool that allows creators restore human faces on an image or a video footage with high quality details. Unlike how other methods work, where blind face restoration is a highly ill-posed problem that often requires auxiliary guidance to improve the mapping from degraded inputs to desired inputs or to complement high-quality detail lost in the inputs, this is a transformer-based prediction network which models global composition and context of the low-quality faces for code prediction, enabling the discovery of natural faces that closely approximates the target faces even when the input is severely degraded. And how this works is simple. First. The tool lends a discrete cookbook and a decoder to store high-quality visual parts of face images via self-reconstruction learning. Next, with a fixed cookbook and decoder in place, a transfer model for code sequence prediction is introduced. This is what actually models the global face composition of low-quality inputs. Alongside that, there is a controllable feature transformation model which is used to control the information flow from the LQ to the decoder. And from end to end, we can see the result. Compared to previous methods, this produces a much more richer and high quality image results. And right here on the website, you'd also notice that the code format tool can be used to restore colors on images. This works on videos and also supports images with in-painting. And for those who like to try this, of course you can. So if you go over to this page, actually right here, you would also notice that we've got a little bit of a tip, which you can use to try this if you want. And something else that this tool does a lot better than so many other tools is this identifies individual faces. So it does look at the entire image, picks up the faces and it upscales them and makes them look super cool. You can take a look at the paper. You can also try this on the drive if you want that. And at the same time, you can go to GitHub. So right here on GitHub, you would also notice that you can pick up a release and you can play with that. But then, there is also some nice things, especially if you like to explore this by yourself. And how you can do that is simple. You can go over to the Google Collab. So if you'd like to explore with this right here, you can do that. If you like to also play with the demo on the Hugging page, you can also do that. And finally, we do have one on Replicate. So a very simple example of how this works is this. The last time we talked about SGAN, we said if you put in an image, it upscales this and it's cool. The same thing happens with blood image, it just simply upscales it. But in this case, we are trying to get an image to look super nice, regardless of how the image is. So if you take a look at some of the examples here, it's easy to say that these examples have been doctored in a way where this just simply work on it. And it is also worth mentioning that this doesn't work on the body. This is specifically for the face. And if you would like to also explore with the ones that you have, we do have a few samples which we can also run through right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click and open up this female face and you can see how blurred this is and let's see what this tool can do. So all we need to do is click drag and drop right here and then we can simply click on the word submit. And once you click on the submit, this runs through, dictates the number of faces in there and automatically you see that. You can choose to save this if you want. You can go ahead and hit the download button and keep that. And you can do the same thing for even more smaller blurry images. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and bring up this. Okay, you can see what that looks like. I'm just gonna go through, drag and drop that right in here. And let's see what we can get. Click on the word submit and this runs through and that takes the face and automatically it generates it. And if we click, we can explore that, click, and we can even get a bit more closer. First off, you'd get to notice that the image size is scaled up because if you go down here, you can also increase the scale. So in case you want to have a much more higher scaled image, of course you can do that. You can get that from there. At the same time, this also works for game models. So if you do have game models and you're thinking about scaling them, giving them that lifelike feel, of course you can. So you can get low poly characters, you can actually get game characters, fit them in and scale these things to get exactly the kind of result that you want. 
If you're working with group images, you can rest easy with this as it identifies all of the faces that exist in the group. And this is going to be very useful for those making posters or you like to simply blow up an image, but you don't want to lose the facial features. Or maybe you do have a group image with low quality and you want to retain or restore those facial features that they do come with. And in terms of black and white, I did try out a few black and white images. These doesn't really handle black and white the way I felt it will. In this case, I think you should better stick with Photoshop and any other tool. It restores the quality of the face, but it doesn't restore the colors. But some of the applications I found this tool super useful is AI generated faces. So in most cases, you may have generated AI faces, but for some reason, AI doesn't do a good job at fixing the eyes or getting those eyes properly. And so with Mid Journey, what we did was seek for a female face. This gave us a female face, low quality. We stopped at the first step so we can save on charges. And what we had to do is take this and throw it right in there. And once we threw it into the tool, we can upscale this and get the best quality of what we want. Code Transformer handles this super nice. And you can take out the very first one and fit it back again and get something else. And the second time, you also notice they have a better image quality than what you had previously. We also repeated the very same thing for other models as well. And in this case, we went for a male model. So the male model with beards, we wanted to get male faces with beards, 4K stuff, you know, all of that nice description. And what we got was the very first one, we threw it in, and in this case, it also upscaled it and got us something nice. But just like we did the very first one for the female one, we uploaded this again and also allowed the code format to take a look at it and make it even cooler. In this second iteration, you would notice across the both images that we are getting a nicer looking eye. We're also getting a nicer looking facial feature. The hair's looking cool. And all in general, this is making the image pop even more. And this is not the only time I would suggest that you throw in an image over and over to get a better result. If you do have a very wavy, blurry image like what we have here, you can also throw that into CodeFormer, get the first iteration, and you can throw it again and get a much more cleaner one. This handles this type of issues very, very well. And it has a wonderful way of preserving all of the facial features that you want. So group images, AI generated images, very blurry images, are super safe when working with this. One thing I also noticed, which I think you guys should also look up, is if you're working with watermark images in a situation where we're dealing with a kid, you can also notice that it approximates the teeth and then it tries as much as possible to take out the watermark. Just in case you're trying to play with this tool, of course, you might also want to consider the licensing for watermarked images. And these are the things that you might need Photoshop to clean up. And while we speak about things you might need Photoshop to clean out, when you're dealing with very old pictures that have lots of scratches and all that stuff, especially black and white ones, this tries to restore the color. Like you might also notice a little bit of a polishing when you're dealing with old figures. So this is more like it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.